lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm bringing you a book haul for all the books that I bought in the month of April. So uh, today I do actually get to talk about a book that I've been sent by a publisher. This is the first time I'm doing this on this channel. Uh, I have been offered books in the past but I've decided not to take them because they aren't really aligned with a lot of what I read. But this is the first one where a publisher has reached out and it's actually a book that I think I would genuinely buy outside of being offered it. And that book in question is Humankind, A Hopeful History by Rutger Bregman. This is a non-fiction that is looking at the evolution of humanity but with the lens of the idea being that um, kindness and compassion have been some of the key motivators for a lot of our um, advancements rather than the standard view that um, it's kind of our warmongering and our hunter aspect of kind of the hunter gatherer that has been the driving force behind a lot of our evolution um to this moment it's a little bit of a controversial idea but i think that it's absolutely beautiful as an idea and i'm really looking forward to seeing how rutger bregman manages to um back this up with lots of different sort of scientific uh, evidence i'm a huge fan of prehistory as a lot of people know on this channel and this book has been blurred by yuval noah harari and matt haig who are two of my all-time favorite authors so that's really exciting to see this book is going to be out hopefully on May 19th and my plan is to try and read it at some point in the month of May so I can let you know my thoughts in the May wrap up. Obviously with everything that's going on I don't know if they are going to push back the publication date but fingers crossed they don't you get a chance to grab this one if you want. It is a bit of a chunker just as a warning uh, and it also came with this super super cute little tote bag that uh yes it's, it's all very nice, very bright orange. I like that one. So thank you very much, Bloomsbury, for that. Okay, and another major reason why I'm doing this book haul today is because I found a new classics collection that I think is absolutely stunning and I really want all their books. So I kind of had a little bit of a buying splurge. So the Alma Classics are a collection that I had not really heard of before, but they have a really lovely collection of slightly less known classics and non-English writers, and they have very pretty covers. And they're also doing a deal at the moment where if you you, um, buy a bundle they're doing bundles of 10 for 25 pounds which is a crazy good deal two pound 50 per book from their 100 evergreen collection so these are various fairly big well-known classics that they consider to be evergreen and constantly in demand so i picked out 10 and i'm going to run through some of them uh, i'm going to run through all of them with you here today the first one is uh, dostoyevsky's the gambler i have crime and punishment on my shelf but it's very big and so this looked a little bit smaller which was very appealing. I am intending to read some Russian literature at some point this year. It is a goal of mine. So there are a few Russian titles in here just to kind of help that goal along. I'm trying to get more familiar with a lot of the Russian kind of naming conventions and some of the common kind of tropes of Russian literature that I'm finding a little bit of a barrier to reading at the moment. And the only way that you get better at them is by reading more of them. This one, as the title suggests, is about a gentleman who um, is basically in a lot of debt because he's a gambler, um, it's set in a casino and it's the misfortunes of the young tutor Alexei Ivanovich. Apparently it was inspired by Dostoevsky's own gambling addiction and just looked really interesting. Another Russian on this list is uh, Nikolai Gol Golgov. Oh, that was bad. Uh, but it's called Dead Souls. Uh, this one is about a gentleman who arrives in a small provincial Russian town and is asking um, from the landowners to give him the rights to the, their dead villagers, um, which just sounds very creepy and a bit strange. I don't really know much too much about it. Apparently it was originally published in 1842, so it is going a little bit further back than some of the other stuff I have on my shelf. And I thought that would be really interesting because again, I know very little about Russian history. So I thought this would be a really nice like of the people kind of thing. And it's got something freaky and weird going on when it comes to um, potentially some magic in there. Maybe he's like capturing their souls. Maybe there's just some kind of fraud going on. I have no idea why he wants the rights to these dead people but I want to find out. Sticking on the trend of non-English uh, classics I do have Franz Kafka's The Metamorphosis and other stories. Uh, this is a relatively famous one it is about a gentleman who turns into a beetle. I read the opening pages of it for an exam a very long time ago at some point in school and have been quite fascinated with the idea of going back and reading it but never really got round to it so I'm hoping again with a gorgeous cover like this that I'm actually going to get a chance to and I suddenly realised it could work really well for Springathon because it is about a gentleman being turned into a beetle so I might end up picking this one up sooner than I expect. Another translated classic this time from Hungarian is Journey by Moonlight by Antal Zerb I'm gonna guess. I'm sorry I know I know me and pronunciation what the hell. Um, so this one is about a couple who travel to Italy on a honeymoon and spend some time in Venice but it's something to do basically they have some kind of like major unrest 
um, in their marriage and it's about them kind of falling apart very early on. Um, it's supposed to be a uh, look at a gently humorous and psychologically subtle exploration of a budding bourgeois marriage. Um, so this sounds really exciting. Apparently it's a rediscovered classic as well which might explain why I've never heard of it before but I love Venice. It's one of my favourite cities in the entire world. I really enjoy Italy in general. I thought this would be a lovely kind of mashing up of two different cultures because you've got a Hungarian author taking on an Italian setting and it all just sounded quite interesting and again so many of these cover buys. Absolutely stunning. I love this collection. Right the other ones that I have are are um, indeed ar written originally in English. Uh, I've got Scott Fitzgerald's The Beautiful and the Damned. This is obviously the author of The Great Gatsby, which I've attempted to read like three times in my life, and each time I haven't got past the first like four or five pages. I really struggle with that book, and I'm not too sure why. I'm not willing to give up on Fitzgerald though, so I thought that this would be a good one to give a go of, maybe just a different story, maybe Gatsby just isn't for me. Um, and this is about a gentleman being led astray from the path of gainful employment to the temptations of 1920s jazz. Uh, sounds good fun, and why not? I have one non-fiction in this pile, and that is The Origins of the Species by Charles Darwin. This was actually the one that popped up on Google because I was looking for a copy of it that then led me to this website and the just stunning collection of books that they have there. So I'm very pleased for this. I read The Voyage of the Beagle last month, maybe? Honestly, who knows what, what time is anymore. And whilst I enjoyed aspects of it, I was a little annoyed at the lack of animal content in it and the amount of anthropology. And somebody commented underneath that I really should have just gone and read The Origins of the Species instead, because actually that is probably what I was looking for. So I figured, given that, I should probably pick up a copy. Uh, this one I've got here. I don't know when I'm going to get to it yet. I might save it for non-fiction November as like a classics read for it but I'm really enjoying branching into classic non-fiction and non-fiction written from um, kind of later time periods rather than contemporary stuff. I think it's really fascinating seeing that evolution of ideas so I'm keen for this one at some point and again like just beautiful. I have the Lost World by Arthur Conan Doyle. I mentioned this in my Springathon TBR. It is indeed on the list. I do have it as an audiobook, but a, a, you know, this was in the bundle. It was an option. I needed to make it up to 10, so I figured there's no harm in having a physical copy. Everyone on this channel knows that I absolutely adore dinosaurs. I'm wearing like a dinosaur uh, dungaree outfit right now, so we all know why I want to read this book. It's clearly about dinosaurs. And again, the cover is just freaking fantastic. Like, I love this sort of colour combination. I think it's beautiful. Okay, we are getting there. I only have a couple more from this particular little bundle. I've got Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte. Um, I read The Tenant Wildfell Hall last year and really enjoyed it. Agnes Grey seems to divide a lot of people when it comes to the Bronte sisters. Some consider this to be the absolute worst of the entire collection of all the sisters, which is interesting because the Tenant of Wildfell Hall is often considered one of the best. So it's fun to see that Bronte, um, Anne Bronte seems to like divide people completely with her only two books that she wrote as far as I'm aware. My mum's read this and absolutely loathed it, but I'm kind of keen to give it a go because I enjoyed the Tenant of Wildfell Hall so much and was so surprised by how much I liked it. So this this one might end up being better than what the kind of general consensus is on it. Also I'm going into it with almost no hype because the general consensus is that it sucks so it could be pleasantly surprising. We'll find out. I have also The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton. I read The House of Mirth last year and deeply enjoyed it and I do again have this one on audiobook but this was too pretty and girly to resist and like I say you know you've got to make your number up to 10 so I thought it'd be nice to get some of the physical copies of things that I already own in audiobook so I'm not like extending my TBR a crazy amount but I'm still getting some really pretty editions of books in this one. Um, I don't actually know a crazy amount about this one but Edith Wharton tends to write it was like turn of the century kind of stuff and it is often about high society and um, people coming for money and she's quite scathing. The House of Mirth was an absolutely fantastic look at like what women had to do in that time period to um, keep themselves in money and the like artifice behind trying to find yourself a good husband so I'm hoping that this one will be kind of similar um I know nothing I don't really want to know too much going into it to be honest I just am keen to try out more of her writer more of her writing and then the final one from this collection is The Sonnets by William Shakespeare this again was one that I just kind of couldn't resist as a look of I'm not generally a huge poetry reader um I've dabbled here or there but find it quite difficult to focus but I do as a general rule of thumb really enjoy both William Shakespeare and his 
sonnets so I thought that by having a little bundle of them I might be more inclined to read them. I also have a book of metaphysical poetry somewhere on my shelf and I do want to try and make it a priority to actually get around to reading some more of it at some point this year so I think that this might be really helpful to kind of increase that that poetry reading because it's something that I would like to try and get into a bit more. Okay I have just a few more books to talk about now as well that I've kind of accumulated in this month. A lot of these are from the Big Green Bookshop which is an online bookstore that is still shipping out so please do check it out. Um, they have an absolutely wonderful Twitter, do some really cool exciting things and they're really good fun. You can ask them to send you specific books based on kind of just sort of your general reading taste. They're happy to look through your Goodreads. Uh, Simon is amazing. I'll link his Twitter down below. He's fantastic. So from them I did pick up a few books. Uh, I grabbed a couple of books that I've already read on audiobook that I wanted a physical copy of so they're already in my shelves. One that I haven't got to yet is Down and Out in London and Paris by George Orwell. This is one of Orwell's non-fiction writings and it's about his time um, being homeless both in Paris and London in the 1920s. I believe my dad's read this and really enjoyed it. I generally love Orwell's writing. I think he's a wonderful turn of phrase. He's one of my favourite authors and I really enjoyed his Road to Wigan Pier and since then I wanted to check out more of his non-fiction. I've got a bunch of his books in audiobook but I don't have a physical one on my shelf to reach for next and this one's quite short plus gorgeous so I was really tempted to give it a go. Then I did ask for a recommendation from Simon, like I said he is happy to do those and he chucked in Gold by Dan Rhodes. This is looking like a cute quirky story about a young woman who lives in a sleepy town and uses some kind of gold spray paint and a bit of an art piece to shake up the local village. I know not very much about it but it's very short, it looks really good fun. I'm also enjoying the fact that it has these like rounded um, corners that I've never seen on a book before so that's just exciting from like a stylistic point of view um, so I'm keen to get to this one soon. Like I said super short, really interested. And then I did pick up a couple of non-fictions from him, one of them being Bonk, The Curious Coupling of Sex and Science by Mary Roach. It's a well documented fact that I absolutely adore Mary Roach as a writer on this channel. I've read four of her books which means I don't have many left but Bonk is one of them so I decided to pick it up. I'm just gonna like zoom in on the cover for you guys so that you can see just how scandalous that is. Look how many different weird freaky sex positions are going on on there. Um, it looks really good fun. Mary Roach basically takes topics and then does a bit of a deep dive into them looking at lots of different scientific uh, ways of understanding them. She's done it for things like human Davids, um, the science of getting to space, science of the army, science of the, of the dead. It's all very exciting and like the afterlife. I generally really enjoy her stuff and it's quite light, fluffy, almost like popcorn style non-fiction that you can dip a bit of in and out of, kind of blitz through in a day. Um, each chapter takes on a slightly different topic so it feels almost like an essay collection and they're really just good fun. So I'm sure I'll get around to this one at some point fairly soon because I just seem to devour the Mary Roach that's on my shelf. It never seems to last long. So this is the next one I'm going to go for. Okay and the next four books that I have to talk about are technically ones that you have already seen if you've seen my Springers on TBR and I've talked about them quite a lot on this channel before so I'm just going to do this fairly quickly. I've got The Cabaret of Plants by Richard Mabe. I told you it was going to arrive finally soon. Uh, this is an illustrated guide to 40 different plant species that have had some kind of impact in human evolution in some way shape or form or our kind of culture and society got Michael Palin's Erebus which is about the particular uh, ship Erebus who had two major um, journeys but on the second one she never returned. She was missing for 160 years and was finally discovered in 2014 and this is about her story and what happened there. I have Incredible Journeys Exploring the Wonders of Animal Navigation by David Barry. Did I get that right? Yes I did. Uh, this is looking at how animals navigate in the world using things like magnet um, using things like the, the magnetic fields and poles and echolocation, all sorts of exciting stuff like that. And then I also have Extraordinary Insects, which is all about insects, funnily enough. Um, so I believe that those are all the books there. Um, I did pick up a couple of ebooks and some audio books, which again, I've talked about in a couple of different channels. Um, couple of different videos and I can't actually remember all of them. I always feel like ebooks get missed out uh, in these kind of big hauls because you don't physically see them as a reminder. So potentially uh, towards the end of May or June I might do like a big ebook haul and talk about ones that I've I have been added into my collection that I haven't talked about for a while um, but I'm not going to do that today. So this was a relatively small relatively quick book haul from me compared to some of the past. The big thing was just those 10 uh, classics that got added in. I really wanted to get this up quite promptly though because uh, Bloomsbury were really nice at sending me the book. Um, where is it? <sighs> 
humankind and I did say that I was going to get it mentioned as soon as I could because obviously its publication date is fairly soon and it's been a little bit of a nightmare getting a hold of it given what's been going on in the world and how difficult post is right now. So thank you so much Bloomsbury for getting this to me given how chaotic it has been. Um, I know we had a little bit of a struggle there but this is really fantastic and I'm hoping it's going to be a really heartwarming read which is definitely definitely needed right now. So May 19th do check it out. That's it from me. Have a wonderful reading week and I'll chat to you soon. Bye!